lecture we are going to see the main archetypes of macro structure called organizational structures. Organizational structure is the overall configuration used by companies to arrange its activities and is generally represented through the organizational chart. The main organizational choices are not independent, but on the contrary, strongly interdependent each other. In fact, decisions about span of control, grouping criteria and coordination mechanism are interconnected to determine some standard organizational structures. On the basis of the combination of these choices, we could identify five main ideal organizational structures, three focus ones, respectively simple, functional and divisional, and two hybrid ones, hybrid and matrix. Each of those organizational structures has different pros and cons and is selected on the basis of the company strategy as well as environment. The implementation in reality of the organizational structure implies an adaptation to the real context in which the company operates. As the name suggests, the simple organization is the simplest way to arrange macrostructure. This archetype is not strongly structured, with just few organizational units related to the main activities performed by the company. This structure is typical of a small companies such as newborn ones, for example startups. Imagine a new app company where the owners are respectively responsible for the technical development of the app and for the commercial and marketing activities. In this environment, all the teammates are responsible for everything, without a clear distinction of the roles and the definition of clear responsibilities. In the simple organizational chart, just a small number of units is present, whereas key units are missing because not totally covered, such as human resource management or administration and control. As a matter of fact, people are organized around the competencies of the key people of the organization, such as the founders or the owners, without a clear grouping criterion. Decisions are mainly taken by the founder or the owner, and the overall level of formalization is pretty low. No strict procedures, no formal description of jobs and responsibility, no clear identification of the main activities in place. Try to imagine a co-working environment where people of different companies work closely each other with just an identification of the final purpose. Grouping criteria are informal as well. People are grouped on the basis of the main competencies of key coordinators and not the opposite as it is supposed to be. Thereby, if one of the founders has some marketing knowledge, people oriented to marketing activities are grouped around this person. Considering coordination mechanisms, the most likely to be adopted are definitely mutual adjustment and competence standardization. For the former, Mutual adjustment is necessary to coordinate different people towards the final objective, given the low level of formalization typical of these organizations. Examples of mutual adjustment solutions might be the owner meeting or the teamwork. In some organizations, also a breakfast meeting to arrange the main activities of the day is used. For the latter, Competence standardization is used to assure that all the people are aligned in terms of what is required to have. For example, in an architectural firm, both an interior architecture and a structural architecture might be necessary. In general, competence standardization pertains to hard competence but also soft competence. When could work a structure like this? Actually, the simple organization is the typical solution of several companies. As already mentioned, most of the startups are organized in that way, as well as entrepreneurship companies. Finally, most of professional companies are organized in that way, such as consultancy companies or architectural firms. Mm -hmm.